National Hill Climb Championships 2020 was on this weekend on Sunday and Andrew Feather won the men's competition and Beth Jones won the women's competition. We could go through the men's power data first, then the women's after, uh, look at some comparisons and pacing um, and numbers and what sort of power numbers you need to do to win these championships. So if we look at the results, I did say Feather and Bell would do well and they did do well. Surprise, surprise. I get my predictions correct. The women's, I'm shame I didn't get Bitcher Jones. I did message her, but she didn't get back to me. So I should have put her more as a favourite because it was a top, top ride from her. Cam Biddle didn't have the best day out, but we'll we'll get into him in a minute. So first of all, we're going to go through Andrew Feather's power data. Then we're going to do Tom Bell's. And then we're going to do the comparison of, you know, the top three, four. Not everyone's uploaded to Strava, um, but all the rest of it. So two minutes and six at 10.2 watts per kilo. Now, feathers and bells power meters reach slightly different, but roughly you need to about 9.6 to 10 watts per kilo ish for two minutes, which is obviously absolutely bonkers. Um, and anyone who can, you know, if you can do 10 watts per kilo for a minute, most people are like, you're pretty good at riding a bike. And feather does it for two, which is just bonkers. So first minute, 682 watts. Uh, we've been through the climb before, but if you didn't know, we'll, we'll just go through it once again. 750 meters. 13% average. So, you know, a decent climb, uh, but nothing absolutely crazy. Uh, they they were said there were gradients of up to 25%. That's rubbish. It wasn't that steep. I'd say the max was about 20. Um, but anyway, so a good, basically, the steep parts at the end. So save a bit, your couple biscuits for the end um, and, you know, start out decently hard. So Andrew Feather on this first segment didn't get anywhere near going fast enough. Yeah, he, you know, he was did 10.6 watts per kilo, so slightly harder than overall. Uh, sorry, um, for the last part, uh, he only did 618 watts, but generally that was pretty well paced. Um, you can see here, uh, 19 seconds uh, was the last part, you know, 10%, but it really did ramp up quite a lot, and you couldn't gain too much speed here, so he's still doing 536 watts, and he's going 36k an hour. Um, but the key part is this streetly steep bit. And this is where people blew up or did well. And even Feather, to be fair, you can see here on the real steep part, did get below 600 watts here. So even he could have done slightly better. But generally, if you look at this, 660, and then the first bit was 690, that's pretty good pacing. I'm um, sorry, 668. So it's it's pretty solid, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I can't lie. Um, we're now going to go over to Tom Bell, uh, who I believe um, was here. So this is Tom Bell's power data. Obviously, they finished very close to each other. Um, so overall for the hill climb, again, 9.4 watts per kilo, but Tom Bell, I, I'm not 100% sure what his weight, he says he's 57, so I'm not sure what, what it's got on Strava, um, yeah, it says 57, so fair enough, um, but anyway, a very impressive ride from him, um, it's good to see him as well afterwards, so the first minute, again, you can see 560, so it does go out harder, but, but not by much, you know, 30 watts, you might say, oh, that's decent, but you've got to remember the end part here, if we sort of take this part here, 550, first minute, 560, now, that is really, really good pacing, really good because, you know, he's gone hard to get up to speed and then sort of settles down a little bit. And in this steep part here, again, 14 percent, you can see it went from 11 to 14 percent. And, you know, he's doing 9.6 watts per kilo, which is, you know, the highest effort of the day. Uh, we're now going to go over to Andy Nichols, who had um, a good ride. He finished fifth, got the team prize again. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get to see someone else's pacing strategy and then we'll get to see it. So first minute, 660 watts. Now that is 11 watts per kilo. So obviously, you know, if he's doing 11 watts per kilo, he'd finish this climb at about a minute 50, a minute 55, and he'd easily win the national championships. So, you know, obviously he went out way too hard. I mean, that's, it's obvious, plain, plain for anyone to see. Um, and the result of that is pretty large, to be honest, because what it means is that on this part here, he was going about the same speed as me. Seven watts per kilo for the last 42 seconds. Um, seven and a half for this part. I mean, it just really wasn't good. But he's ridden the course before. And I guess the ultimate question is, why do people go out too hard? It's just because you want to get everything out. And if you don't go hard at the beginning, you think you might not get it all out, um, which, you know, happens to a lot of people. So people would rather go out too hard. But 
obviously there's you know going out a little bit too hard and then there's going out at 11 watts per kilo hard um so he averaged 9.1 but he probably could have averaged nine and a half, I reckon, if he'd paced it slightly better. Maybe done 10 watts per kilo for the first part and then nine watts per kilo for the second minute. And then, you know, but some people aren't like that. Some people, you know, do real big power at the beginning and then die. But we'll see what the sort of comparisons is here. So we've got Cam Biddle as well. He doesn't have any power data, but similar thing. So we're going to ignore the first couple hundred meters because it, it, it's slightly erroneous. There's lots of wind and uh, sorry, trees. So GPS is an ideal. But you can see, you know, first 20 seconds. Tom Bell's up by two seconds, Andy Nichols is up by four seconds, Cam Riddle's same pace. 200 metres, you can now see that everyone's ahead of Feather, which is quite amazing. Andy Nichols by up to five seconds, which is obviously like, you're 200 metres in, you're five seconds up. That means if you know, if this continues, you're going to be, what, 15, 20 seconds up? So that's obviously not happening. Um, then we go 300 metres in, 48 seconds, and like Cam Biddle and Andy Nichols are now six seconds up, halfway through the climb. And like, obviously, they're not going to continue. I'm not whacking Feather by 11 seconds. So they just went out too hard. And it's quite obvious they did because you can see um, as we get closer, you know, they start to come down. They start to come down, which is fine. Um, now Tom Bell and Feather are basically the same time. They paced it pretty similar. Tom Bell is the pink. Obviously, Feather is the black line. Um, but this is the bit at the top. This is where the steepest part is. And this is where the time just starts to leak. But actually... It leaks then because people are putting in the effort, but when it really leaks off, it's just here before it gets, as soon as it gets flat, then Feather actually goes up to like 36k an hour, which is mad fast. And that's actually where he beats everyone. I think just in the last little bit, he keeps the numbers going and everyone else is dead and they lose massive amounts of time. I mean, like, you know, with 150 meters to go, Cam Biddle is three seconds off Andrew Feather, Tom Bell is about the same time and Andy Nichols is actually three seconds above Feather. And that tells you, that, you know, that last 150 meters was the deciding factor. But, you know, that's the deciding factor. But realistically, what was actually the deciding factor was the beginning. If you go off too hard, you get caught on this climb. And everyone said it on the day, but no one could, but you still do it. Everyone does it. Everyone goes off a little bit harder, but you just can't go off at 11 watts per kilo. You're just not going to win. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's my analysis of the day. Don't go off too hard. Go off harder, but not too much harder. Otherwise, you're going to blow up. Um, but as I said, the watts per kilo... On the day 10, which is crazy, same as 2018 Poiroid. We're now going to go over to the women's. Um, Bithja Jones won, no numbers, no Strava, no nothing. She's an old school on the feel, it seems. She's got quite a good gap, to be fair. Three seconds to Mary Wilkinson. Monica Greenwood was the third. Um, and then a couple of the Southwest, Bexley Jew and Kate McTeer coming top, top 10 as well, which is super impressive. Um, so we're going to go through some of the numbers now. Um, and Charlotte Davis also 14, huge ride from her. Um, and we're going to have a look at what you need to do to win it. So Mary Wilkinson, obviously a very solid climb by her. Um, two minutes 50, uh, seven watts per kilo. But actually that's slightly incorrect. It's more like, yeah, seven watts per kilo there. Um, so anyway, we, we now look at the climb and you think, okay, you know, you don't want to go too hard at the beginning. We look at the first minute and we see this and we say, oh, no, no, no. 520 watts that's not the one she sets off at nine watts per kilo and holds that she's doing a 230 she's whacking bith to jones by 30 seconds like that's not happening and like the pacing is like on par as, as, as what we saw in the men when people just went off too hard and then she's doing 5.8 watts per kilo for a minute and a half and this is the hardest part okay we'll, we'll get rid of the top because that's not the hardest part but this part here is where you make it 200 meters at 16 percent and she's doing four, six watts per kilo like, I mean, that's, this is the issue. You've just got to pace it well. Like, she's got the QM on the Tom Williams hill climb chap, who, to be fair, is a junior, and he won the, the juniors. He's a, he's a rapid boy. But she whacked me on, um, she, sorry, she whacked me on the first part. She went on on me, and then finished, like, seven, eight seconds down on me. So, you know, and I, I had a horrendous ride, but we'll, we'll ignore this. Um, But, like, she she is, like, flying on that part. And it's not surprising. She did some really, really sort of what's. But it's just a shame she didn't save it to the end. She didn't save the biscuits till the end. And then, you know, that's that's the that's the issue here. I mean, you know, she was still, you know, a very good time for sure. Seven watts per kilo for three minutes is, is very impressive. You can see here, Strava Source says it's well tall. But she had more in it. She lost by three seconds, but I think the pacing strategy could be the same. And we look here at um, Becky Story's ride, and it's a similar-ish picture, but, but not to the same degree. 
Um, she obviously went out hard, 434 watts for the first minute. Um, and obviously average was 380, but it's not horrendous. But like, you know, you're getting up to 23K an hour here. It's like, yeah, fair enough. But then you've got to think like this part here, you hit 8K an hour. Like that's not the point. This is the point where you want to see a massive surge to keep the momentum up onto the flat part. And, um, you know, that's really really the issue here um, with a lot of people is it just went off too hard and you heard it all day long every single rider said don't go off too hard but most people still do um, and we can look at the Strava comparisons Mary Wilkinson is the black line everyone else is obviously slower than her um, but even then Mary Wilkinson like went off hard and people are still going harder than her she's still like two seconds some people are still like two seconds quicker than her um, Bexy Juice, I'm going to get rid of this one because it's obviously not this, her actual time because she finished 10 seconds back. I said she finished 20, but like people, yeah. And then you can see here with Mary Wilkinson, though, like Emma Grant went hard, then lost a lot of time here. So I guess she recovered and actually, to be honest, finished quite strong, but then at the top again, lost time. So it's a similar picture to the to the men's. I think, I assume Bitcher knows the climb. She's from around those parts. She probably just paced it better. I'm not sure, obviously, she did very good was Kilo, for sure, at least 7, 7.2 was per kilo. I'm, I'm certain of it. But, you know, th this is what it comes down to. It comes down to the fact on the day, can you pace it? Can you hold it in? Like, have you practiced in training, doing a two-minute max test or doing it for the, for the woman, a three-minute max test, two-minute, 30 max test, and seeing, like, how evenly can I pace it? Do I go out 530 watts and then fade, as Mary Wilkinson did? Well, yeah, if you do, then that's not what you want to do. You want to practice being able to, you know, negatively split it. Okay, you're never going to be able to negatively split a two-minute effort. It's not possible, I think, physiologically almost. Like, I haven't seen anyone on the day negatively split it. Um, obviously, you could if you literally rode zone one, but you know what I mean, and get a good result. So I think you are going to positively split it, but I think just the degree of this is just absolutely bonkers. Um, but anyway, those are my thoughts for the day. Cheers for watching. Hope you have enjoyed these videos on hill climbs. I'm very passionate about hill climbs. I think they're a great way to start racing. They're just good fun. Everyone's chilled out. There's no like egos or anything because you just whack up a climb and see how you do. Um, I love all the bike tech and all the rest of it. It's just, you know, super, super interesting to see. Um, and it was really good. I think Mary Wilkinson said about 145 women doing it, which is way better than usual. I think like 30, 50 people, uh, women more than usual, which is class because I don't really understand why it's not more equal. Um, but anyway, next year, I've heard it's Mam Nick uh, or Winnets. Um, it will be a short course on Winnets for three and a half. Mam Nick will be like six minutes. Um, so I'd be, I'm pretty up for that. Hopefully we should get a good, uh, get some good training done in winter and uh, whack the hill climbs in next year. It seems like a long way away, but hill climbs always seem to come quite quickly. So there we go. If you're a woman, then you need to whack 7 watts per kilo two, for 2 minutes 50. And if you're a bloke, you need to do 10 watts per kilo for 2 minutes. And then you're going to win a nationals. So get training, lose some weight, and you can win nationals if you can do those numbers.